In this video, I'm going to be configuring a Kodi PVR front end on a Raspberry Pi as a client to the Myth back end I set up in my Intel Nook video. I'll put a link in the description to that uh, Intel Nook Myth TV build I did. Um, you'll probably want to watch that uh, before you watch this video so this makes sense. But I'll continue from that point. Um, the Raspberry Pi client mostly works with the Intel Nook build in the previous video, although there are a couple of changes. I'll need to open up a terminal on the Intel Nook, and I'll have to type in sudo gedit slash etc slash mysql slash my.cnf. This will bring up the mysql config file, and I want to look for the bind address and I need to comment that out. This will allow MySQL to accept remote connections. I'll save that and close it. Then you need to restart the MySQL server so you can say sudo service MySQL restart. Another thing we need to look at is the HD Home Run Tuner configuration. We need to make sure the transcode profile is set to uh, one of the presets and not none. The transcoding will re-encode the video into MPEG-4, which the Raspberry Pi supports. You can get a codec for the Raspberry Pi to allow it to support MPEG-2, but I don't have that. So I'm going to set mine to Internet 540. Okay, next I'll transfer over to the Raspberry Pi and uh, we'll work on the configuration. Okay, I've now connected a Raspberry Pi with an open elect install on it. I'm not going to go over installing OpenELEC on the card, but this has not had any modification to it yet. Um, so this is a native uh, OpenELEC build. The Raspberry Pi I'm using is a Raspberry Pi 2B, and this is the uh, one gigabyte version with the quad-core processor. Since this is the first boot, it's going to resize the partition on the SD card. So this is the initial setup of the OpenELEC Kodi build. I'm just going to hit next to get through here. I am on a wired network. This is OpenELEC 5.02 and it has the latest Kodi build on it. So to set this up as a PVR client, we'll need to go to System and Settings, Live TV, then we go to General and Enable, and this will tell us we don't have a PVR add-on enabled. So it'll take us to the PVR client setup area, and we'll go to the Myth TV PVR client. So here we'll go to Configure and the Myth backend hostname or IP. What we want to add here is the IP address of the Myth backend. Now we're using the API method of connecting this PBR client to the Myth backend. So we have a security pin here, which I've left as default on the Myth backend, but if you did change it on the backend, you'll need to change it here. And of course, you'd need to change the ports if you modified those. But this is going off my previous video, and I didn't make changes of those. So I'll hit OK here. I'll say Enable. And you'll see up in the right-hand corner, it just loaded channels here. Now it's rebooting. And if I go to TV and EPG or Electronic Programming Guide, you'll see it has all the programs on here. That's a, an SD station. I'll go to an HD station.
this is only a 10 uh, a 720p monitor so uh, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate 1080p on here but it does work with 1080p and you have all the same features you would have on my Intel Nook build as far as recording programs We can hit record here. And we can see recordings just like a standard Kodi build. Now if you're using an older version of XBMC, you need to supply your MySQL uh, password along with uh, the correct IP address in the setup. It's a similar setup, but it's slightly different. So. I don't have any audio on here either because the monitor doesn't have audio, but if you have HDMI audio, that should just automatically work. So also with the Raspberry Pi, HDMI CEC will also work. So you can use your TV remote. If you have a smart TV that has HDMI CEC, you can use your TV's remote to control this. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.